है गाइस वेलकम बैक टू मस्ट ऑफ बायोलॉजी तो गाइस हमने लास्ट वीडियो में अगर आपको याद होगा अगर आपने लास्ट वीडियो देखी होगी तो हमने एक पूरा चैप्टर खत्म कर दिया था लास्ट वीडियो जो है उसमें हमने लास्ट चैप्टर खत्म किया था जो कि जो है एनिमल टिश्यूज के ऊपर था जो कि स्ट्रक्चरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के ऊपर था है ना तो हमने उसमें काफी कुछ पढ़ा था एनिमल टिश्यूज से रिलेटेड आज हम नया यूनिट स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं गाइस जो कि है सेल के ऊपर है ना तो सेल का स्ट्रक्चर क्या होता है उसके फंक्शंस क्या हैं, क्या रोल प्ले करता है वो कितना इंपॉर्टेंट है वो है ना और उसके बिना बेसिकली लाइफ जो है अर्थ पे वो नॉन एग्जिस्टेंस है है ना तो बेसिकली हम सेल्स से स्टार्ट करेंगे जो हमारा एर्थ चैप्टर है जिसमें हम डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेल्स और ऑर्गेन के बारे में पढ़ेंगे है ना तो स्टार्ट करते हैं जो है बेसिक फंडामेंटल से कि सेल है क्या सो गाइस बेसिकली सेल को है जो हम बोलते हैं कि मतलब बेसिक यूनिट है लाइफ का है ना तो सेल को क्या बोलते हैं सेल को हम बोलते हैं कि बेसिक यूनिट है लाइफ का है ना तो इसका मतलब यह है कि बेसिकली आपने जितने भी यू you नो know, अपने अराउंड लिविंग नॉन लिविंग चीजें देखी होंगी है ना तो उसमें ये तो नोटिस करो कि आखिर वो बने किसके होते हैं किस चीज के होते हैं है ना हम जब कोई भी चीज देखते हैं तो देखते हैं किस चीज का बना हुआ है ये तो वैसे ही जहां जहां हम लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम या लिविंग थिंग्स की बात करते हैं तो दिमाग में एक ही चीज आती है कि कोई भी लिविंग थिंग हो वो हमेशा सेल्स की बनी है ऑल ऑर्गेनिजम्स इसीलिए क्या बोलते हैं ऑल ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर मेड अप ऑफ सेल्स राइट अब उसमें कुछ ऑर्गेनिज्म होते हैं जो सिंगल सेल के बने होते हैं एक सेल से इसको बोलते हैं यूनिसेल्युलर और कुछ ऑर्गेनिजम्स होते हैं जो मल्टीपल सेल से बने होते हैं मल्टीपल सेल से बहुत बने होते हैं इसको बोलते हैं मल्टी सेल्यूलर है ना तो बेसिकली हमारे मतलब क्या हुआ कि हर ऑर्गेनिज्म सेल से तो बना ही हुआ है अब वो एक सिंगल सेल से भी बना हो सकता है और मल्टीपल सेल से भी बना हो सकता है अब आते हैं कि एग्जैक्टली exactly सेल की फिर डेफिनेशन क्या होगी क्या मतलब है यूनिसेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिज्म अगर एक सेल के बने हैं तो क्या वो सब कुछ कर पाते हैं इंडिपेंडेंटली तो यूनिसेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिज्म की अगर हम बात करें गाइस तो यूनिसेल्युलर ये जो ऑर्गेनिज्म होते हैं ना ये केपेबल होते हैं दो तरीके के इंपॉर्टेंट फंक्शन करने में एक कि ये इनडिपेंडेंटली ये इनडिपेंडेंटली एग्जिस्ट कर सकते हैं इंडिपेंडेंट एग्जिस्टेंस हो सकती है और दूसरा दे कैन परफॉर्म ऑल दी एसेंशियल ऑल दी एसेंशियल फंक्शंस ऑफ लाइफ सो ऑल दी यू नो फंक्शंस विच आर एसेंशियल फॉर अ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म कैन बी डन बाई अ यूनिसेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिज्म राइट सो बेसिकली वी कैन से दैट सेल इज डिफाइंड एज इट इज द फंडामेंटल स्ट्रक्चरल इट इज द फंडामेंटल स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंक्शनल यूनिट ऑफ ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द सेल गाइज सेल इज द फंडामेंटल structural and functional unit of all living organisms now for the first time anton van leeuwenhoek anton van leeuwenhoek for the first time saw and described a live cell and it was robert brown who later discovered the nucleus inside the cell and then we had you know basically the invention of microscope and the electron microscope which led to you know the de- you know to the structural detail of the cell so basically so basically after discovery of the microscope one can easily reveal all the structural details of the cell right now the next topic is you know the cell theory so basically what happened is in 1838 is that there was a german botanist with the name of matthias kleden 
Now, Matthias Gledon in 1938 examined a lot of plants. So he was a botanist, right? So in his name was right. So he, for the first time, basically examined a large number of plants and he observed that all plants are composed of different kind of cells, which ultimately forms the tissues and tissue system in the plant. Now, almost at the same time, another scientist, so he was a botanist, right? He was a botanist. Now, almost at the same time, Theodore Schwann, he was 38 and Sean was 1839 and he was a zoologist. So he used to study different type of animal cells. So he, uh, Theodore Sean studied different type of animal cells and he saw that the animal cells have a thin layer of, you know, membrane, which is now known as plasma membrane right so he also and then sean also concluded you know based on his study uh, on plant tissue so he later on he also studied plant tissues and he concluded that there is a presence of cell wall which is a unique character to plant cells so he also gave uh, us the theory that plant cells have cell wall they have cell wall yeah right now on the basis of that that sean proposed the hypothesis that all plants and animals are composed of cells and they are product of cells right now basically scladden and sean together formulated the cell theory and what did they say exactly so they said that all cells all animal and plant cells are composed of cells uh, sorry all plant and animals are composed of cells and their product of cells but they did not explain you know how the cells divide how new cells are formed and all that later on rudolf virchow later on rudolf virchow in 1855 basically explained how cells divide and how new cells are formed so basically what he said is that all the cells these all these cells divide and then new cells are formed from pre-existing cells now this is known as omnis cellular a cellular which means cells, all cells divide and new cells are formed from pre-existing cells. So basically, after this discovery, Rudolf Virchow modified the hypothesis of Scladden and Schwann to give the cell theory a final shape, right? Now, this cell theory is understood by two points. First one was given by Scladden and Schwann that all living organisms are composed of cells and are products of cells, right? And then second point, which was given by Rudolf Virchow, that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. And this exactly is known as the cell theory. Now, guys, in the next uh, topic, what we are going to study is an overview of cell. Right. So let's see what is an entire overview of a cell. Right. So basically, uh, you know, I remember doing certain experiments in my graduation days wherein we did an experiment with onion peel to check for a plant cell. So if you basically observe cells in an onion peel or in case of animal cells, if you, you know, just get human cheek cells from the inside of the mouth and you check that under the microscope you will see, see a typical plant cell in case of onion peel there is a distinct cell wall as the outer boundary and within that you have the cytoplasm and you have various cell organelles in, in that right and in the case of animal cells you see that the cell wall is completely absent and there is just a thin membrane which is known as cell membrane which is known as 
or even which is known as plasma membrane and inside that you have the cytoplasm and then various cell organelles right and then later on it was uh, you know seen that these these basically uh, they, there is a presence of nucleus as well inside the cell so there is a you know in case of animal cells in case of human cheek cells it was found that you know each cell has a dense membrane bound structure which is known as nucleus so basically cell they have nucleus and these nucleus have chromosomes they have chromosomes and these chromosomes have the genetic material which is the dna right so basically they have the entire genetic material present inside each and every cell of a human's body now apart from that there are cells with membrane bound nuclei which are known as eukaryotic cells and then there are cells which lack a membrane bound nucleus so these are known as prokaryotic cells now in both the cases in prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cells there is a presence of a semi fluid matrix which is known as cytoplasm and this cytoplasm it basically occupies the entire volume of the cell now this cytoplasm basically is the main arena of all the cellular activities whether it's a plant cell or an animal cell and there are various chemi chemical reactions occurring inside the cytoplasm which keeps the cell in the living state right so you can see how complex you know a cell in itself is how complex it is right now apart from that you have you know uh, different types of membrane bound organelles in case of eukaryotic cells so beside nucleus you have other membrane bound organelles like you have endoplasmic reticulum you have golgi complex you have lysosomes mitochondria microbodies vacuoles and all that right so we'll study all these organelles in detail later in uh, you know videos of this chapter and then you have prokaryotic cells where all the organelles are present but they are not membrane bound they lack membrane bound organelles right apart from that you have an organelle which is ribosomes these are again non membrane bound or organelles and they are present in the cell as well as in, in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes now they are present in the cytoplasm as an organelle and they are also found in inside various organelles other organelles so they are found in chloroplasts in case of plants and they are found in mitochondria and then they are found on rough endoplasmic reticular as well so you can see that there are certain organelles which are found as an organelle in the cytoplasm and then as part of another organelle as well right now again we have in in, in case of animal cells we have presence of another non membrane bound organelle which is centriole this centriole guys helps in cell division so you can see that each and every organelle of these cells play a very 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 important role for existence of the cell for working of that cell right now basically cells you know differ a lot in shape and size right so the smallest cell which is a which is mycoplasm is 0.3 micrometer in length so the smallest cell is mycoplasm which is 0.3 micrometer then you have bacterial cell which is 3 to 5 micrometer can you name the largest isolated single cell please mention it in the comments largest isolated single cell is that of egg of ostrich so ostrich is egg i hope you would have seen ostrich either you know in person or you would have definitely seen it in uh, on tv in videos so it it you know ostrich itself is a very big bird flightless bird and the egg that an ostrich lays is quite big it is very big and that single egg basically is the largest isolated single 
cell as well right now apart from that you know in multicellular organisms what happens is there are different types of cells which perform different functions so if you see here if you see this different type of cells here the first one is nothing but red blood cells present in blood now they are round and biconcave right in the same way you have white blood cells white blood cells are amoeboid in shape then you have epithelial cells so these are columnar epithelial cells and they are long and narrow this again guys is a very typical structure right so this is a nerve cell no cells are branched and they are long so it is considered as one of the longest cells nerve cell then this is a tracheid a plant cell which is elongated this is another plant cell known as mesophyll cells now mesophyll cells are round and oval so you can see that inside plant there are different type of shape uh, cells with respect to shapes in animals there are different type of you know cells with respect to shape so you would be wondering why you know these cells decide to be oval or round or long and narrow or amoeboid or branched so basically guys the structure of these cells are basically depending or are related to exactly what function they are performing in the body so remember that the structure is very much related to the function that a, you know a particular cell or a particular organ you know uh, uh, you know uh, performs so these cells have different or distinct structures on the basis of the functions that they are going to perform in the body so guys with this we have started off with the basics of cell we have covered just you know the overview and the of cell and the cell theory so i hope you understood this basic later on in, in you know different videos we are going to cover the entire uh, different type of cells prokaryotic eukaryotic plant and animal and then we are going to cover all the organelles as well as per the ncrt syllabus so guys please do not forget to like this video share it with your friends and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel agar aap naye hain is channel pe to aur guys agar aapko koi bhi doubt hai all to bahut hi basic topics hain but fir bhi agar aapko koi bhi doubt hai to aap zarur mujhe message kijiyega is video ke comment section mein aur zarur bataiyega aap mujhe ya to comment section mein message karke bataiye ya to aap mujhe whatsapp number par bhi message kar sakte hain aur whatsapp number description mein diya hua hai but guys apna feedback zarur dijiyega aap इस वीडियो के लिए मैं वेट करूंगी आपके फीडबैक का तो चलिए गाइज मिलते हैं नेक्स्ट वीडियो में बाय